Welcome everyone, we've got chapter 39 today. Now when Jerusalem was captured in the ninth year of Zedekiah king of Judah, in the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and all his army came to Jerusalem and laid siege to it. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the city wall was breached. This thirty-month siege involved surrounding the city walls, cutting off all entrances and exits, all food supply and water to make it an easy takeover. Verse 3, then all the officials of the king of Babylon came in and sat down at the middle gate. Nergal, Sal excuse me, these are tough. Nergal, Sarezer, Samgar, Nebu, Sarsechem, the Rab Saris, Nergal, Sarezer, the Rab Mag, and all the rest of the officials of the king of Babylon. When Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and all the men of war saw them, they fled and went out of the city at night by the way of the king's garden through the gate between the two walls. And he went out toward the Arabah. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And they seized him and brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, at Riblah in the land of Hamath. And he passed sentence on him. Then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes at Riblah. The king of Babylon also slew all the nobles of Judah. He then blinded Zedekiah's eyes and bound him in fetters of bronze to bring him to Babylon. If this sounds familiar, we read the same event in 2 Kings chapter 25. The Chaldeans also burned with fire the king's palace and the houses of the people, and they broke down the walls of Jerusalem. As for the rest of the people who were left in the city, the deserters who had gone over to him and the rest of the people who remained, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, carried them into exile in Babylon. But some of the poorest people who had nothing, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, left behind in the land of Judah, and gave them vineyards and fields at that time. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave orders about Jeremiah through Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, saying, Take him and look after him, and do nothing harmful to him, but rather deal with him just as he tells you. So remember that God promised Jeremiah that he would protect him earlier in the book. Verse 13. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, sent word, along with Nebuchadnezzar, the Rab Saris, and Nergal Sarezer, the Rab Mag, and all the leading officers of the king of Babylon. They even sent and took Jeremiah out of the court of the guardhouse and entrusted him to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, to take him home. So he stayed among the people. Now the word of the Lord had come to Jeremiah while he was confined in the court of the guardhouse, saying, Go and speak to Ebed-Melech the Ethiopian, and this was the guy from yesterday who pulled Jeremiah out of the cistern of mud, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am about to bring my words on this city for disaster and not for prosperity, and they will take place before you on that day. But I will deliver you on that day, declares the Lord. And you will not be given into the hand of the men whom you dread, for I will certainly rescue you, and you will not fall by the sword. But you will have your own life as booty, because you have trusted in me, declares the Lord. Okay, for those of you who are new to this channel, uh, we've been going through Ray Comfort's Evidence Bible. Ray Comfort is one of those heroes of the faith, in my opinion. God has blessed him with tremendous wisdom. He's an amazing street evangelist, teacher, and he's put a lot of his experiences and wisdom as commentary into this Bible. And today, our article is called, Why Are There So Many Denominations? In the early 1500s, a German monk named Martin Luther was so conscious of his sins that he spent up to six hours in the confessional. Through study of the scriptures, he found that salvation didn't come through anything that he did, but simply through trusting in the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. He listed the contradictions between what the scriptures said and what his church taught and nailed his 95 thesis to the church door in Wittenberg, Germany. Martin Luther became the first to protest against the Roman Catholic Church, and thus he became the father of the Protestant Church, short for protest. Since that split, there have been many disagreements about how much water one should baptize with, how to sing what and why, who should govern who, causing thousands of splinter groups. Many of these groups are convinced that they alone are right. These have be become known as Protestant denominations. Despite the confusion, these churches subscribe to certain foundational beliefs, such as the deity, death, 
burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John chapter 10, verse 27. All true believers follow him and obey his word. Thomas Jefferson once wrote about a preacher, Richard Mote, who exclaimed aloud to his congregation that he did not believe there was a Quaker, Presbyterian, Methodist, or Baptist in heaven. Having paused to give his hearers time to stare and to wonder, he added, In heaven, God knew no distinctions. Dear Lord, we want to ask you to strengthen our hearts today through your word. We want to trust you and serve you in every aspect of our lives. Please forgive and protect us and grant that we continuously watch and wait for your trumpet to blast, ushering in the final phases of the return of your kingdom. Please keep us from worry, confusion, and fear caused by present day events. And instead, may we rest knowing the eternal days to come. Help us to freely serve you and not be led astray. Grant us your Holy Spirit and all that we do, for without you, we will not see victory. Please accept our praise for the many ways you have given us help. In your glorious name we pray, Lord. Amen. Thank you guys for being here. Hope you're uh, having a great day so far. We've got the Lord, so it should be great. God bless you. Keep on keeping on fighting that fight. Love y'all. Take care.